let's dive into how to extract the necessary data from various sources. Here are some of my go-to free sources for extracting data layers online. For example, CAD Mapper can extract existing buildings, landforms, and roads in 3D models. OpenStreetMap is another popular open source mapping tool. Let's start with the most commonly used map source, OpenStreetMap. It's completely free and offers global data coverage. I've selected an area in Boston for this case study, a site near a park with a river. I'll walk you through the process of extracting existing site and surrounding area data from OpenStreetMap. Since OSM is an open source platform, you can turn on the Map Data option in the right panel to view detailed property information with a simple click. You can also toggle the map's contour lines for better topographic detail. Once the study area is selected, click the Share icon in the right panel, choose Export as SVG for further editing, and then download the file. I prefer to choose custom dimensions and download the exact area I want, so I circle the desired area and save it as an SVG. Once it's downloaded, right-click the file and open it with Adobe Illustrator. Next, we'll clean up the file. It's pretty common to encounter this when you open the file. Don't worry. First, right-click on the canvas and select Ungroup. Then, delete the black mask on top and the map will appear. You'll notice each component is clickable, which means it's editable. However, everything is on the same layer, so we'll need to separate them into different layers based on their properties. I usually start by deleting any unnecessary elements, like text since it's not typically needed in mapping diagrams. To do this, zoom in on the map and select any piece of text. If you can't select the text layer, ungroup it first. Then, select one word shape, go to the Select menu, click Same, and choose Same Appearance. This will select all text with the same appearance, black fill and white outline at once. From there, press Ctrl plus X to cut the selected layer. Next, create a new layer and rename it Text. Then, go to the Edit menu and choose Paste in Place, or use the shortcut Shift plus Ctrl plus V. This will paste the text exactly where it was on the map, but now it's on its own layer. This way, you can easily hide or unhide the text whenever you need to. Use the same method to select the building text shapes. This time, instead of moving them to a new layer, just delete them. Next, I'll delete the icons as well. Now we can start separating important properties like buildings. Just like before, select one building block, go to the Select menu, choose Same Appearance, and press Ctrl X to cut. Create a new layer, then paste it in place using the shortcut Shift Ctrl V. I renamed the layer to Buildings. When I click the small circle on the right side of the layer bar, all the elements on that layer are selected. This allows me to change the color and stroke for all the buildings at once. It's pretty common to use black fill with a white stroke for building footprint analysis.
Next, I'll separate the properties layer by layer, starting from the base layer and moving on to roads, green spaces, and the river. You can find the full process in my Mastering Mapping Techniques for Architectural Site Analysis course. This lecture covers the entire workflow, from extracting data from open map sources to transforming it into visual mapping diagrams. In this session, you'll learn the fundamentals of mapping, what it is, how to extract the necessary layers from various free and open sources, and how to create different styles of mapping diagrams to enhance your site analysis. In the lecture, I walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to extract and refine mapping layers, then edit them into various styles. For example, in this chapter, you'll get an in-depth look at extracting data from OpenStreetMap and refining it in Adobe Illustrator. I can see sea of alpine green Something that will stay with me Sky is wrapped in blue Once I've cleaned the files and recolored the layers, the map will look completely different from the original download. Now, let's make the diagram more fun. I'll create a new layer for the mask and place it at the top of the layer stack. We can refine and edit the cleaned file into both circular and flat style mapping diagrams. Alternatively, we can take it a step further by editing it in Photoshop to create axonometric mapping diagrams. Similarly, with flat diagrams, we can use the same base layers to explore different ways of presenting axonometric diagrams, enhancing the clarity and impact of our visual storytelling. We can also transform the diagrams into axonometric circles, adding a more dynamic and engaging touch to the presentation. The Mastering Mapping Lecture is currently available at a limited time discount. Find the link in the description and enroll now.